Hi there. I've had a request to uh, show off some of the old camera gear I've, I've got around here. I have uh, a modest collection, but uh, some date back as early as uh, around 1929, up uh, to some of the last of the film era cameras, and some of the very early digital cameras. So, over the course of this uh, video, I will give you uh, a little tour of my museum of sorts. <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. Okay, the first example I'm going to show you is probably my oldest camera. This is a Pocket Kodak 1, number 1. Uh, these were produced from 1922 up to 1931. As you can see, it's a folder. Uh, this particular one, the bellows, is in really rough shape. As a result, it is not usable in its current state. Focusing was accomplished using a little thumb wheel right here that moved this forward and back. The shutter, nice and quiet, eh? Down here you had uh, your apertures, and it was a multi-blade aperture. I don't know if you can see it here. Let me see if I can get this in focus. Now, can you see the aperture blades? There they are. Okay. So it had an aperture, but as you can see, the number system is not standardized. It says one, two, three, four. Up here you had your shutter speeds, and shutter speeds ranged from T, time, so it would stay open. We have B, bulb, stayed open as long as I held it. Then you had 1 25th of a second, and 1 50th of a second. And it seems like this shutter works quite well. The shutter release can also be accomplished by, let me see here now, by screwing this in here. We now have a remote shutter release. Other neat little features of cameras from this era include a little stand so you could lay it on top of a table or whatever. As I said, it took size 120 film. The viewfinder was a simple little uh, box here, which you could actually tilt a little if you were doing close-up work. Mind you, you'd have to guess. And there may be some accessories missing. Obviously, something went into these little holes right here. I'm not sure what. And when we fold it all back into its case, we end up with, whoops, sorry, got to make sure you focus it all the way to infinity. We have a nice little package that has a little handle on top. And this was a pocket model. As you can tell, you need some pretty big pockets. Okay, I'm not going to open it up because uh, it's in kind of rough shape and I'd, I'd like to preserve it as long as I can. All right, so there is number one on my list of cameras, the Kodak Pocket Number One from the late 1920s. The second camera on my list is uh, a present from a uh, uh, a friend at our local camera club. Uh, thank you, Jean Guy. This is a simple box brownie. This particular one is actually called the baby brownie because instead of using the larger 120 or 620 film that most of them did, this used 127. Now, for a viewfinder, it had a very simple wireframe type arrangement. You had the little window at the back to tell you how many exposures you were on. You wound your film right here. And this was your shutter release. As you can see, there's just one shutter speed. 
dandy little camera. It's made out of Bakelite, that very hard, very heavy plastic that old telephone po uh, telephones and things were made from as well. But a really, really nice little piece from my collection. Okay, here we have variations on the same theme. The simple box camera. This one I've already shown you. Used 127 film, had a simple targeting device, and a simple shutter. Here we have a somewhat more sophisticated device. First of all, this is entirely made from metal. It was made in Germany. It's the Optima brand. Uh, it had two settings for the shutter. There was bulb and instant. Simple winding device here, a little window at the back that could be closed to show what frame you were on. Uh, I haven't checked this out completely. Oh, the, the viewfinder is a simple look down, see forward. Uh, I haven't looked carefully at the spool that's in this. It's either 120 or 620 film. But a very simple device. Had a tripod mount. Uh, very, very... Probably a quite accomplished little camera for its day, but very simple. One shutter speed, one aperture, no frills. The Optima from Germany. Okay, my next camera is another American make. This is an Ansco. This one dates from the late 1950s, probably around 1956. Uh, my aunt brought it to my mother, and she used it for a few rolls of films, not very many. Uh, when I open it here, You'll see that the entire camera basically comes apart. And we have 620, a 620 film roll. Well, having seen this roll, now I can tell you for sure that this camera uses 120 film. All right, so we have 620 film. The viewfinder is attached to this section. You have your winder here for the film. A little window at the back of the camera to tell you what exposure you're on. The whole thing goes together and locks. Unfortunately, the shutter in this particular camera is broken, so it is no more. But what was neat about this camera is that it had a flash. Now, this took rather large flash bulbs, and batteries went in here. You ejected the bulb when it was finished, when it was all blistered and swollen, held together by the bit of plastic. The camera body is metal. All of the working part here is plastic. Uh, this camera actually has, as I said, a certain amount of attachment to me because this was the camera that my mother used to take what few pictures there are of me as a young boy. The Ansco. Okay, my next camera here is another Kodak. This is the Brownie Reflex. These were built from uh, 1940 to 1942. And they used a reflex, a twin lens reflex type of viewing system. Now this did not have uh, proper ground glass or anything like the, uh, the Raleigh's, but uh, it still worked quite well. This took 127 film. Again, it had the two settings, instant and bulb, where it would stay open as long as I kept the button down. As you can see, the flash of this one's gotten pretty battered, which is too bad. But this was a usable camera. It took 127 film, a uh, short production run, just 1940 to 1942, the Brownie Reflex. Okay, here we have the Brownie Holiday Flash, another 127 film camera, uh, still made from Bakelite, but this one is a much more recent model. This, uh, this was built from about 1953 to about 1962. As you can see, it used flash bulbs, 
Okay, you could put your batteries in here get at one shutter speed and used 127 film. Uh, opening the camera was a case of simply moving these two levers on the sides, which I'm not going to try to do right now with this old camera. Tiny little viewfinder window there for this viewfinder. And a very simple lens. This one was actually made in Canada by Canadian Kodak. Okay, as you can see right here. It says a Canadian model for the Canadian market. The Kodak Holiday Flash 127 film box camera. Now I've decided to dedicate this video to just simple box cameras. Uh, and not get into my 35mm collection until a later video. This was my first real camera of my very own. An Instamatic X15. This takes, of course, 126 cartridge film. Similar in size uh, to 127 film, but in a much simpler cartridge. Had a very nice viewfinder. Took a uh, an image that was pretty much square. So we have a square image, just like uh, with the roll film cameras. That, that was the big difference with the roll film cameras. Some of them took square images, some took rectangular images. And on the back of the roll, there were th usually three sets of numbers, uh, depending upon what your camera did. But of course, with the cartridge film, you had no such choices. This is the only roll of film I have right now. This is a 12 exposure roll of triple print film. These guys would send you a roll of film, you put it in your camera, you take the pictures, you send it back to them, you get back triple prints. One big print, two little prints, and a new roll of film. It was uh, pretty crappy film, but hey, I was a kid, I did what I could. And this used magic cubes. Now, what's the big deal about magic cubes? These did not require batteries. They were actually triggered by a little plunger that would hit a spring here and cause these to ignite. Uh, the result was you got four flashes on each one. And uh, no worries about dead batteries. This entire camera system had no batteries at all. And uh, it, unlike some of the other cameras, which were not, uh, you could do double exposures, this one you couldn't. Until you wound the film, you couldn't cock the shutter. Hear that? That's the shutter cocking, that last little stroke. So this was another Kodak camera. This particular model one was actually made in Canada. You can see it there, I think. Let's see if we can get that in focus. There we go, made in Canada. So this was a made in Canada Kodak for, um, I don't know if they made them all in Canada or if it was just for the Canadian market. And I still have the box and the instruction manual that came with it. So my first real camera of my very own. A 126 Instamatic X15. Okay, the last of my simple box cameras that I'm going to bother showing is this right here. My little Agfomatic 1000S. This took 110 film. 110, of course, is a cartridge format, like 126. Uh, it was smaller, but actually uh, technically was uh, had certain advantages because of the way in which the cartridges were mounted. It was a little more stable than 126. However, as you can see, the negatives were very tiny. Uh, this camera, you wound, you hit the button. And this used the same magic cubes that were used by the uh, Instamatic that I showed you earlier. The neat thing about this camera is that it folded down to this size, which made it very pocketable and had a very nice little wrist strap here. 
it actually took pretty decent pictures. I used it on a vacation one year and got some really nice shots because I wasn't worried about camera settings. I was just worried about composition. And the result was uh, some very nice pictures. Anyhow, very simple camera. Again, no batteries involved. Uh, it just took pictures. Nothing more, nothing less. Light had to be right or you got bad pictures. So that is my 110, my last of my uh, simple box cameras. I hope you enjoyed this little presentation about some of my camera collection. Um, on a later date, I will be presenting a, another video where I will get into 35mm and the early digital. Uh, among my collection, I do have some interesting pieces. I have a Kodak DC40, which is one of the very first consumer digital cameras. I have a rather unusual Minolta that uh, came apart. We'll see about that. And a few other interesting pieces from the early days of digital as well. So, I hope you enjoyed this first installment in my camera collection. And uh, next time, it will be 35mm. Remember, if you liked the video, click like. If you want to see more, click subscribe. If you have a friend that would like to see this, then share. And of course, I'm hoping to see you again next time. Bye for now.